so I'm completely overwhelmed with the donation. We um, we left Ghana knowing that there were many villages without any access to healthcare, water sanitation, even transport to, to be able to afford a car or a taxi to take people to receive medical care is a challenge in some communities so this is the best donation we could ever give back to Ghana and I am supremely grateful to, to Anne James and Ken Wenman for, for enabling us to take this vehicle back over there. Uh, I was first approached by Joe uh, at the a &E delivery board that myself and Joe sit on uh, with our CCG partners. Uh, Joe explained that her charity board calls for Ghana and the improvements that, that, that were required. Um, she gave uh, honest testimony of transporting patients with uh, serious leg fractures and uh, serious infection in the back of flatbed trucks and taxis. Uh, I posed the question then to our fleet team and, and James then, Chief Exec for UHP, contacted our Chief Executive Ken Wenman and Ken, within uh, a very short time, came back and said, yeah, we can make it happen. We've also assisted with, with equipment for the team and the benefit that it'll have and provide to those communities in Ghana will just be fantastic. As I said, the previous ambulance transport was back flatbed cars, trucks uh, and taxis. This will allow the team to deliver the necessary patient care in a controlled environment. So when we found patients in villages with no access to treatment, what we quickly realised was that many of the volunteers are 18, 19, on a gap year, might be student nurses, have never done a, um, a healthcare role where you need to go back and finish something off. So we found that when we were meeting people and dealing with their wounds or their illnesses, if we left that day, there would be no return visit. So for us, this ambulance will visit those people. The volunteers will pay a fee, so it's usually about £50 a week to volunteer to do the outreach programme. That pays for petrol, it pays for um, bandages and healthcare products and that's how it will be a self-sustaining programme for, for the volunteer organisation. Uh, most memorable um, patients that we saw while we were at there was a young boy, a six and a half year old, who we were asked to see who'd fallen off a, sw a swing about four and a half weeks before we'd got there and he'd been nursed on the floor of the outside of the, their accommodation for the whole time. Um, so when Joe and I got there, he was in like um, a hip spiker bandage um, and as soon as the, his grandmother and mother lifted him up, it was very obvious he'd dislocated his hip. He had a dressing on his arm, which was um, a newspaper dressing um, and it was very obvious to us that we needed to get him to hospital. He needed you know, immediate hospital intervention. So I think the thing that's most obvious for me as a nurse of 40 years is we take an awful lot for granted with our NHS. Um, the conditions in their hospital are very, very stark. Um, they rely very much on the family to do lots of their nursing care. Um, the equipment is dire. Um, it's very old, if they've got any at all. Um, but the main thing that really pulls at your heartstrings is if the patients don't have any personal health insurance, they're sent home. No insurance, no care. So, you know, from a health perspective, NHS serves us very proudly. So I've always loved the NHS. It's, I only ever wanted to be a nurse. And um, when you see how hard it is for people to receive treatment and care, children, adults, elderly people, even if you can change a few lives, it's worth it but it absolutely makes you appreciate what we've got here. And it makes me realise why I still love getting out of bed every day to come to work.